Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. As you could probably tell from the thumbnail as well as the length of this video, this is going to be a very hefty one, so if you haven't already, consider getting some snacks and a drink before sitting down to watch this. So today, I'm going to be ranking K-pop companies based on the music that they create and release, and on literally no other factor. That's the only thing that we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to be taking into account all of the groups that these companies manage or have managed in the past, and be giving some commentary on the music that I enjoy, as well as my own personal gripes that I have with the music styles of each of these different companies. So I know that a lot of people are going to say that I'm biased towards certain companies because of the groups that they manage, but before I get called a company stan, I just want people to know that I literally do not care care about any of the people involved in upper management when it comes to any of these companies. Like, I stand twice, but I don't stand JYP, the person. I stand Icon, but I don't stand Teddy, if that makes sense. I just wanted to get that out of the way so that people don't think I'm like a company defender who would justify companies mistreating their idols or anything like that. This is also just all up to my own personal taste in music, so if you disagree, that's totally fine, let's just respect each other's opinions. I'm going to be talking about 20 different companies in this video, not including ones like Blackberry or KQ that only manage one group, and all of them are either big three slash big four or mid-tiered companies, so if you're pretty deep into K-pop, you should be able to follow this video pretty easily, and even if you're not, I'm going to be talking about the groups that are under all of these companies, so don't feel like you need a PhD in K-pop knowledge in order to be able to watch this video. Thank you all for watching this video, please try to keep it civil in the comment section below, but I know a lot of people aren't going to listen to me there. So without further ado, let's just talk about the company that is in last place, aka 20th place. What's the So in last place, we have Brand New Music that manages AB6 and BDC, as well as the soloist Lee Unsung. They also manage a bunch of hip-hop artists, but we're going to be focusing only on their K-pop music in this video. So even though they're in last place, I don't think that Brand New Music has absolutely no good songs under their entire K-pop catalog. I think AB6 has one of the most memorable and just good debuts of the fourth generation, and I like probably half of their titles and a good few b-sides too. But that's quite literally it for me. Besides a select few AB6 songs every now and then, literally nothing that brand new music has ever put out has made it onto my playlist. I'm sure that BDC is a lovely and talented group, but it just seems like there's a very apparent lack of care in all of their music. Almost as if brand new music took songs that were supposed to go to AB6 but weren't good enough to make it onto their final albums and gave them to BDC instead. And most of AB6's stuff, even if there's a lot of effort put into it, just isn't my taste in music, so I don't enjoy most of their songs either. As far as Lee Eun's songs catalog, it's sort of the same thing with BDC, where nothing really stood out to me, and he's actually going to be debuting in a new boy group under the company this year, so I hope that Brand New Music can sort of step up their game. So that's why that Brand New Music is last on this list. <laughs> In 19th place, we have Cube Entertainment that manages G Idol, Pentagon, CLC, B2B, and Lightsum, as well as formerly Hyuna, 4 Minute, Triple H, and Beast, who are now known as Highlight. And if you're familiar with my stand list, you might be wondering why Cube is this low, considering I stand CLC, Pentagon, and G Idol. And to answer that, most of the music that I like that comes from Cube is self produced by the idols who release it. And the majority of the music that Cube puts out without creative help from their idols is actually pretty bad in my opinion. While I love a bunch of title tracks from CLC, Hyuna, 4 Minute, and B2B, we have to consider their b-sides which are all kind of mediocre to me, and a majority of the time just feel like they lack a sense of inspiration. I have listened to a bunch of b-sides from all of these groups, but I've never gone back to them simply because I never wanted to. Yes, there are a few gems in each of these groups' catalogs, but they're very few in number and they just kind of don't compare to the music from a lot of these other companies. Yes, I think that g Idol's catalog and Pentagon's catalog are both great, but if they didn't have their self-producing idols within those groups, their discographies would not be nearly as good. And Cube is more so lucky that they got these idols under their management in order to bring them success, rather than Cube itself as a company giving these groups good enough music to make them popular, because they just didn't do that, these groups made that music themselves. So essentially, I think that Cube have good title tracks for their artists, but it doesn't really go much beyond that, and most of their good music comes from their self-producing artists, rather than the company itself. <laughs> Go 
So next up on the list we have FNC Entertainment, and under FNC Entertainment are groups such as AOA, SF9, Cherry Bullet, and P1 Harmony, as well as the idol bands FT Island, CN Blue, and N Flying. And while I do follow a good amount of groups from this label, especially AOA, P1 Harmony, and Cherry Bullet, I do feel like the musical quality under FNC is very inconsistent. In my opinion, that sometimes they give groups absolutely flawless albums, and then the next release will be kind of mediocre in comparison. For example, one of my absolute favorite albums of 2021 was Cherry Bullet's Cherry Rush album, where I have every single song on there saved, but for their next release, which was their Love in Space album, I only have one song saved. And it's like this for all of the FNC groups and bands, where they'll have really high highs in their discography and then extremely low lows. If I was only looking at the good music that all of these companies put out, FNC would be way higher on the list. But when you take into consideration the massive amount of skips that FNC has put out in their lifetime, I just can't really justify them being much higher on this list. I do really enjoy that the music from FNC Entertainment covers such a wide variety of genres. There's truly just not that many similarities between groups like Cherry Bullet, AOA, and P1 Harmony, but unfortunately, even though they have all of these different genres under their belt, they still have a lot of mediocre music to me, so that's why they're this low. I'm going now. They don't care no more. Right above FNC, we have C9 Entertainment, which is home to groups such as CIX, Signature, and Apex, as well as the soloist Yunha, but I wouldn't necessarily consider her an idol, so we're not going to be covering her in this video. Now, I want to preface this by saying that CIX is one of my favorite groups of all time, and I'm a pretty big follower of Signature as well, but the main reason that this company is so low is because of their music in 2021, honestly. Pre-2021, CIX and Signature had what I would call some of my favorite discographies of all time, even if Signature's was pretty small. I thought they both had a very well-defined and niche sound that stood out from other K-pop groups, having both standout title tracks and well-executed and consistent b-sides. But with both of their runs in 2021, as well as the debut and first comeback of Epex, C9 Entertainment hasn't been making my favorite music recently. In 2021, all of these groups seem to have a very apparent lack of a musical identity, with CIX going from a more mystical and dark concept to a bright one, Signature going from a loud and fun concept to a very mellow one, and Epex doing a different concept with both of their releases last year. While I still love CIX and Signature, I'm just not too sure what direction they're going to be going with their music in the future, and I hope that all three of these groups can switch it up because none of what they put out last year is really my favorite by any means. Next up is YG Entertainment, home to groups like Big Bang, Winner, Icon, Blackpink, Treasure, and 21. And even though I recognize the influence that all of their groups have had on the K-pop industry, overall, I'm still not the biggest fan of YG groups and their music. I think a lot of their senior groups have music that sounds very much so outdated, and a lot of the effects that they used in their music, especially the vocal effects, just seem somewhat comedic in 2022. I know a lot of you might say, well, some of their music is over a decade old, so of course it sounds outdated. And to that I say, if you look at groups such as Sistar, Infinite, Rania, or even Nine Muses, these groups that debuted under different companies at essentially the same time still have music that holds up even a decade later. And I guess to me, YG Entertainment's senior groups just don't have music that compares. As for their third and fourth gen groups, I don't really have a problem with any of their music, but I do think that it gets somewhat boring after a while. I love How You Like That and Jik Jin, but I can only listen to so many different versions of those songs, and I do think the YG formula has kind of made these groups somewhat boring in my eyes. And by the way, Icon is safe. <laughs> Above YG Entertainment, we have Woolum Entertainment, which manages Infinite, Golden Child, Drippin, Rocket Punch, Kwan Unbi, and previously Lovelies. I don't have too many problems with Woolum Entertainment, but I feel like the music that they've put out has never really been good enough for me to stand any of their groups. I enjoy a Rocket Punch song here and there, I enjoy a Drippin song here and there, I enjoy a Golden Child song here and there, but besides maybe one or two title tracks from each of these groups, nothing's been good enough to where I'm like, oh, I want to get into this group even more. Those select few songs are Wanna Be and Pump It Up by Golden Child, Nostalgia by Trippin' and Bim Bam Boom by Rocket Punch, by the way. Woolum Entertainment has really never released a title track that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing I've ever heard. But I also never really feel a sense of pizzazz from their music. You know, it's just a consistent 7 out of 10, a C minus, C plus, C plus title track. And I never really hear anything that's above an 8. So overall, I just feel very meh about Woolum Entertainment, and that's why they're this low. I wanna be a friend. Next 
Next up we have Hive, which is kind of a conglomerate of a bunch of different companies, and manages BTS, TXT, Seventeen, and Hyphen, From Us 9, and previously New East and GFriend. And while I don't hate music from Hive, I think it needs a lot more creativity. Hive tends to find one sort of sound that they like, and have all of their groups do it for an entire year. In 2020, it was retro, with BTS's Dynamite, Seventeen's Home Run, GFriend's Mago, and TXT's Blue Hour, and I just sort of wish that they branched out with all of their different groups. Because the most successful K-pop company of all time doesn't need to play it safe. There are definitely a lot of peaks under Hype's catalog which prevented them from being lower, some of those being BTS's Dark and Wild album, Fromis 9's Midnight Guest album, TXC's debut album, and in Hyphen's Dimension Dilemma, but these peaks are kind of rare from Hype, and that's why I put them pretty low on this list. <laughs> In the number 13 spot we have MLD Entertainment who are this high because of Momoland specifically. They also manage T1419 and unfortunately it's that group's discography which prevents them from being higher on the list. I know a lot of people say that Momoland has bad music that all sounds the same and I know I've said this so many times before but if you actually listen to their b-sides, they cover a really wide variety of genres and they have really good music overall. In my opinion their title tracks actually tend to be weak spots in their discography and MLD Entertainment has given Momoland a discography that is albeit small fantastic in quality. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to do the same thing with Momoland's brother group, with the only T1419 song that I like being Exit, but I actually really like it, so if you're interested in this group, that's the first song that you should check out. There's not much else to say because they only have two groups and they don't have much music, but Momoland discography flawless. Well, not flawless, but almost flawless. And I hope the new girl group that they're planning to debut with Shauna from Girls Planet 999 is also as good as Momoland. In 12th place we have IST Entertainment, and IST Entertainment is the merged company of former Play M and Cracker, so that means they manage A-Pink, The Boys, Victon, and Weekly. First of all, I just have to commend IST's skills at making title tracks. I've talked about The Boys and their amazing titles a million times on this channel, but honestly, this applies to all four of this company's groups. I mean seriously, you have A-Pink with Ung Ung, Mr. Chu, and Dum Durum, Victon with What I Said, I'm Fine, and Eyes Eyes, and even Weekly with Tag Me, After School, and Zigzag. These groups know how to make a good title track and they make some of the best in the entire industry. Now, I just need that same energy from this company with their b-sides as well. All four of these groups are seriously lacking in the b-side department and even though the boys' last two releases were nearly flawless, I need their next few to be just as consistent before I can justify putting this company any higher. IST also has some really bad blunders under their belt, their most two recent ones being A Pink's Dilemma and Weekly's Venpara, so they're not completely safe in the title track regard either. So that's why I put them in the number 12 spot. By the way, for this video, even though WM, Entertainment, DSP Media, and RBW are all under the same management, I'll be looking at all of them separately for this video, specifically because I have a lot to say about all of them individually. I know I put Hybe, Source Music, and Playtis all as one company in this list, and that's mostly because everything that I said for one of them applies to the other two, so it didn't really seem like there was much of a point to put all of them in separate entries. So I just hope that clears things up for anybody who's confused. And now let's talk about DSP Media. So in 11th place we have DSP Media, which is home to the groups Card and Mire, as well as the former April, Kara, and Rainbow. I want to start off by saying that DSP Media has some of the best girl group songs of all time. If you don't believe me, just listen to Mamma Mia by Kara, Oh My Mistake by April, or Woo by Rainbow, and you'll understand what I mean. While they don't have too many standout beats, Besides, they definitely still do exist, and DSP Media girl groups almost always have fantastic titles, so it's not that big of a deal. Although, unfortunately, all of DSP's girl groups are disbanded, so we won't be getting any new titles soon. And as for their two active groups, Card and Mire, they are somewhat hit or miss when it comes to titles. I think Card had a pretty forgettable tropical house phase, and Mire took a couple of releases to have a good title, but they always have a standout b-side or two. So to sum everything up, DSP Media, they usually have good music, and it does get consistently released, but maybe it's every other release instead of every release being good, and that's why I put DSP at number 11. <laughs>
Starting off our top 10, we have Top Media, and I know what you're thinking, but Juice, your all-time favorite group is MC&D, and, and they're under Top Media. Why are they only number 10? Well, to start off, Top Media manages the boy groups Teen Top, Uptension, MC&D, and previously 100%, as well as the soloists Kim woo and Lee Jin Hyuk. And while I've never necessarily hated a release from any of these artists, I think a lot of them tend to be somewhat mid, for lack of a better word. Besides MC&D, who have my favorite discography of all time, not many of the releases from these other artists are memorable to the point where I stick with them for like more than a week. Sometimes they do have a really catchy hook, such as an Uptension So Dangerous or Legion Yuck's 5k, but most of the time the choruses seem to lack some sort of memorable melody, and I'll just never go out of my way to re-listen to any of these releases. Some of their artists, such as Kim woo have really good titles, but their b-sides aren't necessarily my favorite, but some of these other artists just don't even have that. Because of MCND, Top Media couldn't have been any lower than the top 10, but if Top Media didn't have MCND, I'm not sure they would even be in the top 15. Number 9 we have Brave Entertainment, which is home to Brave Girls and DKB, as well as formerly Big Star, and I think that Brave Entertainment has pretty good music overall. Despite being a 4th gen boy group, DKB have a very 2nd gen sound to them, and even though they don't have too much music, the music that they have been putting out is consistently good, and Brave Girls' very tasty discography is finally getting the recognition that it rightfully deserves. Because they are a more senior group, Brave Girls have a very classic sound to them, focusing on rich and full vocals that you don't see much in 4th gen. So with these two artists, I think that Brave Entertainment has a very firm grasp on how to make timeless sounding music. I'm also a huge fan of the music that Brave Entertainment has given to other K-pop groups. I think their extensive work with AOA specifically gave them such a wonderful discography, and even if people don't know Brave Entertainment, they know Brave Sound and they get hyped when they hear that little producer tag in the intro of a song. <laughs> Above Brave Entertainment, we have RBW Entertainment, which is home to One Us, Mamamoo, Purple Kiss, and One Wee, and I am a huge fan of both One Us and Purple Kiss. I think the consistency that both of these groups have had in their discography is somewhat unmatched in 4th gen, and especially titles like Valkyrie, Black Mirror, and Zombie are some of the best things that I've ever heard. Both of these groups also have fantastic b-sides, but unfortunately the company as a whole is kind of brought down by Mamamoo and One Wee. I love Mamamoo's titles, but their b-sides are very much so lacking to me, and to be honest, One Wee is probably my least favorite K-band when it comes to music. Their kind of sound is just not my thing, unfortunately. It's very obvious that RBW recently is trying a lot harder with One Us and Purple Kiss specifically. They've been given a lot better music than the other two groups, so I think we know where RBW's priorities are. RBW is absolutely capable of making good music, but they kind of pick and choose who they give that music to, and it really does show and hinders some of their other artists. <laughs> In the number 7 spot, we have JYP, home to Twice, Stray Kids, Itzy, Extinary Heroes, Enmix, and Day6, as well as 2PM and formerly Got7, Miss A, and Wonder Girls. I think JYP have a pretty unique set of groups under their belt, and it's kind of gotten to the point where it's almost impossible to find somebody who likes every single one of these groups in their music. Just looking at their three most popular groups right now, Twice, Itzy, and Stray Kids, I've seen people who like Twice and Itzy but not Stray Kids, Stray Kids and Twice but not Itzy, and Itzy and Stray Kids but not Twice. And personally, besides a honestly decent amount of itsy b-sides, I'm kind of in the boat of people who like Twice and Stray Kids. And the point I'm trying to make is that JYP makes so much music of so many different genres where I can't like all of it. Unfortunately, I'm not one of the people who likes Enmix or X Denary Heroes debut songs, and I'm more inclined to listen to the JYP groups that have a little bit more seniority within the company. I'm not the biggest fan of the musical directions that JYP is taking with some of their newer groups, but I like all of their older ones, so the new JYP groups kind of keep the company out of the top 5. I'm definitely glad that JYP is making so much music that there's something for everybody, but while a lot of people will like one song, a lot of people also won't at the same time. And recently, I've been disliking more JYP songs that I've been liking them, but the groups that I do like have prevented JYP from falling out of the top 10. Of 
JYP, we have Fantasio, which is home to Astro, Wikimiki, and formerly Hello Venus. And I don't really have any complaints about Fantasio. If you've been on this channel before, you know how much I love Wikimiki's music, and Astro and Hello Venus do not tarnish Fantasio's reputation in the slightest. Hello Venus honestly have pretty stellar music from what I've heard. I love songs such as Mysterious and Wiggle Wiggle, and while Astro did kind of have a generic boy group phase for a bit there, as you know by my stand list, I am a fan of music like that, but their cute stuff does still reign superior. The only reason that Fantasio isn't higher is because the other companies on this list have even better music, and Astro and Hello Venus don't necessarily do enough to push them into the top 5. And that's saying something considering how much I've been talking about Astro recently. I really don't have any complaints about the music, especially from Wikimiki, besides maybe they should get more, but besides Wikimiki, I think the other companies just have a bit of an edge on these groups. <laughs> Starting off our top 5, we have Jellyfish, which is home to Vix, Very Very, and formerly Gugudon, one of my all-time favorite disbanded 3rd gen girl groups. I may somewhat be influenced by some of my friends when it comes to how I feel about Jellyfish's music, especially one of them, you know who you are, but honestly, with the 3 groups that Jellyfish has had under their catalog, they have had an immaculate run. I'm just gonna talk about my favorite piece of music from all 3 of these groups. First of all, for Vix, let's just talk about the Oda Vix album. People who stand Vix say that Oda Vix is the best full album in K-pop of all time, and honestly, I wouldn't argue with them on that. Genuinely some of the best R&B music that I've ever heard, and the fact that they have such good vocalists only enhances the song that much more. The level of overall cohesion and consistency, and the fact that they have an 11 track album with zero skips is so impressive, and I actually bought this album just because I really wanted the CD, like that's how good it is. And for Gugudon, their title track Not That Type is in my top 40 when it comes to my most listened songs on Spotify of all time, genuinely so loopable, and I'd even go as far as to say it might be the best girl crush song I've ever heard. Well, it would be if Get It by Priston V didn't exist. And for Very Very, they have a top 5 fourth gen boy group debut song. You can catch me listening to Ring 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 on any day of the week. I love that song so much. Jellyfish groups really don't have many, if any, weak spots in their discographies, possibly a title track or a b-side every once in a while, but they always redeem themselves, and I always look forward to what a Jellyfish group has to put out. fourth place we have Mystic Story, which manages Billy, Lucy, and Brown Eyed Girls. And I think out of all of the labels in the top 5, Mystic Story is the most creative out of all of them. Out of every single K-band that I've ever listened to, I think Lucy is the only one that has a truly unique sound, and having a violin player as one of their main members only adds to that. Instead of going the typical rock route, Lucy have a more magical and kind of folky sound, and unlike most other K-bands, none of their releases really sound the same, which is really impressive considering they're limited to the same instruments every single time. Their Panorama album, which has the title track Jogging is probably the best K-band album that I've ever heard, and I would absolutely say that they're the best idol band that I've ever known. Billy and Brown Eyed Girls are also just insanely good. Their title tracks Ginga Mingayo and Kill Bill respectively are just complete game changers. I can't describe how good they are besides saying that nobody else has ever done it like them. I honestly am not too familiar with Brown Eyed Girls' discography, but they're actually on my list to listen to all the way through so that they manage. <laughs> Starting our top 3, at number 3 we have WM Entertainment, which is home to ONF and Oh My Girl and B1A4. And let me just say, the duo of ONF and Oh My Girl is way, way, way too strong. Both having some of my favorite title tracks out of the entirety of K-pop, and ONF having probably my third favorite discography of all time, WM really just never miss. I can genuinely say that every single other group on this list has some misses here and there, the two companies above WM just have much higher highs, but WM have just never made a bad title track, and you can argue with the wall on that one. I use this term so rarely because I think it's so overused by K-pop stands, but I genuinely think that ONF and Oh My Girl are breaths of fresh air in the K-pop industry because they always stick to what they know and they never follow trends. ONF have stuck to their cyberpunk concept since debut, and Oh My Girl have never done a non-bright title track. And somehow, nothing that they've released has ever gotten boring. It is currently March 27th as I'm recording this, and I'm so excited for Oh My Girl's comeback in a few hours, because in terms of music, they've really never disappointed me. I haven't heard much from B1A4, but from what I've heard, they don't drag this company down to the point where they can't be top 3, and WM Entertainment is one of my favorites when it comes to music. I'm on the next level, 
I really doubt that most of you expected any less from this company, and in the number 2 spot we have SM Entertainment, because what other company has their groups pioneer so many different trends and have them do it so well? They have groups like Girls' Generation, Super Junior, Espa, NCT, and Red Velvet under their belt. These groups are all so influential and they all have such great music too. You have G and Into the New World by Girls' Generation, Cherry Bomb, My First and Last, and Superhuman from NCT, Next Level by Espa, even Super Junior songs like Sorry Sorry and Mr. Simple are iconic. And don't even get me started on Red Velvet, like Bad Boy, Russian Roulette, Power Up, Queendom, even Rookie. These are all such legendary songs and they all come from one company. You can always count on SM Entertainment to try a new genre for the first time and have like 50 other K-pop groups try and do the same thing, only 5 months later and not as well, because that's just SM's brand at this point. Yes, they do have some misses here and there like 127's 2020 run, but their highs are just too good to ignore and too good to not put this company in second. And do not even get me started on FX, like Rum Pum Pum Pum? Are you kidding me? Love? Milk? Let's their discography. I could go all day, don't get me started. I'm not even gonna go there. I really hate SM Entertainment and all of their management things that they have going on, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the quality of the music, and the music is always phenomenal. Maybe not always, but usually. <laughs> First place, the company with my favorite music of all time is Starship Entertainment, formerly home to Boyfriend and Sistar, and currently home to Monsta X, WJSN, Gravity, and Ive. And I'm not too sure what to say because I feel like the names of these groups are pretty self-explanatory as to why they're first. Monsta X probably has the best badass music in all of K-pop. Sistar have never been topped for me in terms of the title of Summer Queens. WJSN has one of the most complex and interesting and just good discographies that I've ever heard. Ive probably has the best 4th gen girl group debut song, and Kravity, although they have very questionable title tracks, have really good b-sides, and with their most recent comeback, it looks like even their title tracks are heading in the right direction. I could go more into detail, but I feel like I don't have to. This is the company that has Sistar, Monsta X, WJSN, Ive. Like, you know these groups, and if you haven't gone out of their way to actually listen to their music and see what they're all about, then that's on you, like, you're missing out. These groups are all legendary because of their music, and while their discographies might not be perfect, they have enough iconic songs to make up for. Do yourselves a favor and listen to some Starship music. I promise you will not regret it. And that concludes this video. This was a very, very, very hefty one. I didn't want to work on my Nugudam Iceberg Part 2, but I kind of wanted to work on a weekend project, so I was working on this video on Friday, Saturday, now Sunday, and maybe even Monday. I'm not sure if I'm going to finish editing this by tonight. I worked so, 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 so hard on this. I put so much time into this video, so I really hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, I would really much so appreciate if you liked, comment, shared, or subscribed. Let me know how you would rank these companies in the comment section below, and without further ado, I'll see you all in the next video.